I am marking what the landscape looks like at this trail point. And just to double check, T4, zero meters. T, B, C. I would call this terra firma. Terra uh, firma? What does yeah, that mean? It's uh, just a term used in Amazonia for slightly higher ground. T, F is my initials for terra firma. It's slightly hummocky. What is hummocky? This bumpy ground. Okay. It's not flat. I will write the note root mat. And root mat. Root mat, you see everywhere here. It's the ground is covered, absolutely covered with roots. It's like 10 to 20 centimeters thick. And these roots are wandering around, growing around, hunting for nutrients. Is that what makes the ground spongy when oh, you Oh yeah, that's it's the root mat. I think they grow pretty fast because you can see it, roots growing into fairly fresh things. And so that creates the fear of root mat phenomena where you have to be careful when you sit down because it may grow into your butt. That's, don't take me too seriously, but termites will do that. Um, termites will grow into your butt? Well, they'll, they'll start eating at your rear end. God. <laughs> um, but yeah, everything here is hunting. <laughs> Everything here is hunting for something to yeah, eat. Yeah, yeah. It's the stuff of science fiction. Yeah. The jungle is a dark and dangerous place. No, not really. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> is that a termite mound? No, it looks like, like a, a burrow. No, oh, it's termites. Cool. Yeah, it's termites. Sorry about having termites <laughs> tumbling out on you. They are angry. going on here. One of the things we see about this sad former tree is that it doesn't have a taproot or anything that resembles a taproot. All its roots are going horizontally, which says to me that there is nothing down down there that's worth this tree putting roots down for. A tree would put roots down for either moisture or or nutrients and there's plenty of moisture. This place rains all the time. You're left with the question, plenty of nutrients, and mm -hmm. no. So it's just, instead of going down, it just goes out. Laterally, yes. Yeah, that's crazy. In talking about how, how nutrient deprived this area is, and, and when you, you know, take a soil sample, it comes up and it's just like nutrient deprived, like sand, essentially. Mm -hmm. It seems like an environment more conducive to a beach than it does to something that would facilitate all of the growth around us. So mm -hmm. how, how can all of this life thrive here if there are no nutrients in the soil? Well, that's getting back to the root mat. It's helping recycle all the nutrients that happen to be released by plants and animals. It's somebody dies like a little monkey, let's say. It's mm -hmm. nutrients get recycled probably through a food chain that ends up eventually in intercepting plant roots and then it goes back into trees and other plants. So it doesn't necessarily need to get all of its nutrients from soil. It Ultimately it, it comes from soil. Once it's extracted, it's recycled, and this recycling allows the ecosystem to build up nutrients. And of course this is where the whole problem of deforestation, land clearing, and agriculture come in, is that the idea is to remove nutrients and feed them to people. That, in the case of nutrient-poor environments, can lead to quite a collapse of the ecosystem. Very near here, we went to a site which had very nutrient-rich soils. The difference was spectacular. Everything was alive. There were animals everywhere. There were ants everywhere. At night, you could hear the tapers and the jaguars and stuff wow. in the forest. And that's what happens when there's lots of nutrients. You can support a very viable, animal-rich ecosystem. I mean, we're yeah. still seeing animals everywhere, but yeah. it's not... Yeah, you know. they, they get their chance to eat tree fruits and yeah. leaves and stuff like that. Or some animals eat other animals. As part of food chain, it's just not as much. And so everybody has to work a little harder to yeah. get their, their feast. All right, Trey, what are we doing now? Well, we're gonna take a few soil augers, right? And so the idea is to see how deep uh, the organic matter, how deep the, our, our root mat is, mm -hmm. and then see if we can get down to some more uh, mineral soils. 
you kind of hear it's yeah. pretty rooty, right? There's tons of roots. So mm -hmm. they're fine. Oh yeah. Really fine sand, yeah? It's sand. Is that kind of what you expected to find over here? Yeah. Yeah? All right, so no big oh, surprises. That's most cool. Now this is the stuff that has not a speck of nutrients in it. Roots are going through it in that little search for whatever they can find. If you look at the forest here, it's kind of like, this is a tropical rainforest, and it seems to me to be the shortest trees, the most spindly vegetation. And yeah, this doesn't really look like rainforest at all. No. I would say that this is probably our most nutrient impoverished zone that we've been in. The yeah, it's you don't hear any birds around here, really. There's yeah. not so if there's no birds, there's probably not a whole ton of insects. It just doesn't seem like there's a a dearth of life. These trees are probably really old and they've lived long and tried hard to grow and they're doing a good job. But good job trees. Yep. It still has brains on it.